first impressions of Science for Little Hearts and Hands from The Good and the Beautiful, their new science unit, Bones and Stones. And I'm super excited to share with you guys my first impressions. I just got this in the mail and I am super excited. If you know me, you know that I have been sharing my first impressions of the Science for Little Hearts units since they came out with their first one. I do want to thank The Good and the Beautiful for sending these over so I can share with you guys my honest thoughts and first impressions. So let's get into the video. One of the things that you'll notice about the science for little hearts and hands is that you're going to notice that the lessons are short and sweet and straight to the point. It's geared towards the early elementary age, preschool, all the way to maybe second grade. So for bones and stones, you'll notice that it's focusing on paleontology and geology and one of the things that i noticed is that if you have older you know grades a beautiful way that you can incorporate all your kids is that the good and the beautiful does have science lessons for older ages grades three and up and a really nice way to incorporate all your kids is that you maybe can get the paleontology unit from the good and the beautiful or you can get the geology unit from the good and the beautiful and kind of combine this as well because I know that sometimes I get questions regarding ages and wanting to incorporate all your kids and because these topics are units that they actually have in their science curriculum it's a good way for you to think about different ways that you can incorporate all your kids of all ages and of course just because it's geared towards preschool to second grade doesn't mean you can't use it for older grades as well uh, the good and the beautiful also for each of their units they're coming out slowly but surely with the science activity books for littles and they actually have a geology one already um, do they have a paleontology one let me put it up here I can't remember if they do but anyways they do have science activity books for littles as well that's definitely a way that you can incorporate more into this okay I know what you guys are thinking let's get into the first impressions and let's see what bones and stones is all about so here is the science for little hearts and hands bones and stones it has 30 lessons here that have to do with paleontology and geology so i am super excited about this we actually did the geology unit from the good and the beautiful uh they're, they're like grade threes to grade eights the one that they have online and we really enjoyed it but this is geared towards the younger ages so we're going to do a little bit of a first impressions i'm going to show you a couple of lessons not all of them but it just gives you kind of an idea of you know what this curriculum is all about it gives you a peek into it and you can decide if this curriculum is a right fit for you so there are 30 different lessons you don't have to do like a lesson a day what you can what i usually do this is what i do some people do you know things differently so what i usually do is i do two lessons a week and I kind of expand on it. So sometimes I will do like an activity, an optional activity that they offer. So it just allows me the flexibility. I mean, you can do more or less, but it's really up to you. They do recommend that you do the lessons in order just because they build upon each other, okay? To understand, you know, uh, the, each lesson, it's better for you to do them in order, okay? So they do have a statement here that also this works well for either if you believe in young earth or old earth beliefs, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they try to keep it pretty neutral uh, but just because of paleontology and, you know, uh, geology and that kind of stuff. So there'll be a frequently asked questions here and then there's activities and supplies ahead of time if you want to just um, prepare for that, you can. Okay, so let's look at the first lesson here. What is a paleontologist? They'll always tell you in the top portion of the lesson if you need any supplies for this one you don't, but you also have it in the beginning of the actual uh, parent guide. So here in this one in particular, it always starts with an opening. I love this because it really, I love the way they do their opening because it really sparks curiosity for the rest of the lesson. If you look at their previous um, Science for Little Hearts and Hands, they always do that. Sometimes there's like a little poem, a little small activity to do. Not that you need like actual things. It's actually like questions that they'll have for your kids. And it's just a lot of fun. And then um, they either have the auto narration for this one, have experiments, 
or they'll have the big book of stories that we're going to look at in just a little bit. So the audio narration here, it'll tell you, if you see here in orange, it just tells the parent what to do. So it'll tell you here what to do. You don't have to read this to your child, but it'll tell you, okay, go to the audio narration. There is a QR code that you can scan. You can go online on their website or you can go on their app. So the audio narration, it'll tell you that you have some game pawns in the back here. And you're gonna grab that game pawn and then you're gonna follow the instructions. In the auto narration, there will be a chime. It'll tell you when to move the game pawn to the number. And you'll keep on going, and you'll go to the next page until you get to the final one. It's really, really fun, really interactive, really engaging for the child, super fun. They always end with a discussion question. So, you know, whatever you learned about, you can discuss it with the child and there will always be the answers here. And then there will be an optional activity that you can do. So it gives you that flexibility. If you need a little bit more to be done, you can do that with your kids, okay? You don't have to do that, it's optional. And usually the activities are very easy, very fun. Sometimes you don't even need anything to complete the optional activity. But the topics build upon themselves. So you're gonna learn about dinosaurs first, right? And then you're gonna build upon it and you're gonna go into more of like geology, like the, the layers of the earth and then landforms, glaciers, and then here, this one is the earthquake one, okay? And in this particular one, there is a uh, supplies needed for the optional activity. Of course, it is optional. Over here, there's an opening. It's always really fun and engaging, like I said. You'll see that it's very short. It's not very long, and it's geared towards those younger ages, as you can see. You'll see that it's very uh, well thought out. I love the illustrations. I've always loved the illustrations. It's very beautiful, very like you want to open up this. You know, you want to do science with your kids, and that's what I want. I want some... I want a curriculum that I want to open up and this is definitely it. So for this particular one, you're going to have story time. Now story time is in the big book of science stories and it relates to the actual topic. Okay. So for this one in particular, it says go to page 126. So if you go to page 126, okay. This one is called the when the earth shakes okay and it'll have a story that relates to the actual uh lesson and you'll see that the pictures are so beautiful illustrations are gorgeous and the actual stories aren't super long but they are like age appropriate and they are very engaging i really really enjoy the stories, this big book of stories, it's probably one of my favorite things. Both my younger kids really, really do enjoy it. It always ends with like a fun facts about like whatever the lesson is about. And in this one in particular, it's about earthquakes. So you'll have like fun uh, facts about, you know, earthquakes and you can go over that with your kids. And that is the story essentially. You'll see different families and it's just so nice to kind of see how they incorporate different cultures and different races. And I feel like it just, it's really, really well thought out. So for this particular lesson, you'll see that there's a discussion question and then there's an optional activity. Uh, so it's here, here it says, have, a ch have the child build a building or structure with blocks or craft sticks, straws, tape, and tape on a table. Tell him or her to try to build a structure strong enough to endure an earthquake. After he or she has completed his or her structure, gently shake the table to resemble the earthquake. If desired, allow the child to try to make a stronger structure. So it's really fun. All of the uh, the supplies that you need, very easy to find around the house as well. So I feel like this would be, that's a fun activity to do with earthquakes. And I love how they incorporate that. Not every lesson has an optional activity. You'll see the lessons that have the science experiments don't have the actual optional activity. Okay. Let's go into one that actually has the experiment. Let's see here. Okay, let's do this one right here, mining. We actually went on a tour of a mine uh, this year. That was one of our first field trips of the year because we were doing geology and it was so fun. If you have an opportunity to visit a mine, guys, I'm telling you right now, go. I'll put a little pop-ups here if I can of our trip, but it was so fun. So in this one in particular, it's about mining <laughs> and there's all the supplies that you need up here. Okay. There's an opening part that you will read to the child and then there's an activity time. So be a miner and it, it'll tell you step by step on how 
to go about the activity. Usually these activities are not super like, you know, complicated, but they are really fun. Okay, so you're going to go through the activity. Okay. And um, if you are wondering if this curriculum incorporates like god and you know christian values and that kind of stuff it does it's non-denominational so it has like a christian worldview but it does incorporate like bible verses and god and that kind of stuff so it is a christian curriculum and then there will always end with a discussion question now i would say that you know the lessons the actual time that it takes it really depends on your kids if they have questions how long it takes for them to like you know to do an activity and or an experiment so it's really up to you you can cut these lessons into like shorter sections where you maybe just do like the opening one day activity time and then you know whether it's a story the book of stories like you can really make this curriculum work for you depending on your child's age or you can do all of it so it's really up to you the flexibility is there so we looked at all of them audio narration the big book of stories and experiments that's how it's kind of you know divided so you'll see here that it's very 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 nicely done very straight to the point guys i'm really loving this first impressions and I am really excited to do this with my kids. So I guess it ends on like maps and the continents, which is super fun. Um, so fun. Yeah, so that is the uh, parent guide, the big book of stories. I already showed you one of the, the stories. So guys, that is the look inside Science for Little Hearts and Hands, the parent guide and the science stories. It looks really, really great, guys. I'm super excited about this. Let me know down below, what do you think their next unit should be for Science for Little Hearts and Hands? I wonder what the next one will be. Maybe a mammals one or like animals. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really excited to see what their next unit is. I know they're going to come out with, is it a couple more or just one? I forgot my overall thoughts as a whole. So I love curriculums that spark curiosity, that tailor to different uh, types of learners. And I definitely feel like the good and the beautiful with their curriculum, they do that. And I think that it's hard to find a curriculum that is specifically for littles and I love that they're coming out with so many different units when it comes to their science for little hearts unit so I'm so excited about that. I feel like this curriculum sparks a curiosity for learning for a love for learning and I love that. So in my opinion if you're looking for a science curriculum that is very well thought out um, is perfect for younger elementary ages um, that is easy for you as a homeschool mom to teach. I think this is a great option for homeschool moms if you need something new and fresh. If you're thinking of, you know, placing an order and you've never used Science for Little Hearts and Hands, they are so well priced as well, um, the units, and I would recommend all of them. Like, I've, I have all of them and I've used it in my homeschool and guys, I really, really enjoy Science for Little Hearts and Hands. It's probably one of my favorites from the good and the beautiful and i'm so excited that i'm able to share this with you i will have a link down below in the description and in the pinned comments that link is not a um an affiliate link i don't make money off that link but it does show the good and the beautiful that i sent you that you watched my video and it will allow for me to continue to make videos like this to show you first impressions and behind the scenes and the good and the beautiful are coming up with so many different things there's their new history curriculum coming out there's a music study guys there's so many fun things happening this year and I hope that I can share it with you guys on my channel. I know that I've been a little bit MIA here. Maybe you noticed, maybe you haven't, but it's nice to be back and I will have an update video coming very, very soon. So thank you so much for watching this video. Again, thank you the good and the beautiful for partnering up with me on today's video and guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.